hello and welcome to your course. This is what your course will look like. Of course, it'll have a different name. Right now, this is the first one. Notice if I go into settings, I'll be able to change the course full name as well as the course short name, and you'll be able to do that later on. You can leave everything else as is, except for a short, a very short, about a 20 word description would be enough. You can also upload an image and then remember to save and display. So that's under course settings. Let's go back into the course. Notice the course should have nine topics. The first one is general, and then let me show you what you'll be doing with the others. First thing you're going to do is go into the top right here and turn editing on. So let's do that now. And now you'll see all kinds of edits everywhere. Please do not remove the announcement. Just leave it as is for now. Let's start with the first one. We're going to go into topic one and we'll give it a name. We're going to call it introduction. So we'll go into settings over here. And then instead of topic one, we will write introduction. Okay, and then we can add a description. You'll be able to do that. I'm not going to do that for you, of course. And then save it. Now we've got introduction. And notice what happens on the left here in the course index. Notice that it changed to introduction. Everything on the left here corresponds or syncs with what's in the middle. Now we're going to go to the second topic and the second topic. Let's go into edit settings in the second topic. And uh, the second topic is called vocabulary. Vocabulary. OK, and here you'll write a description. You'll be creating engaging activities for vocabulary. Let's save that. And I'll show you how to go into activities and resources and add them. Next one, we're going to label. Let's go into edit. We're going to label it. Let's uh, continue here. We're going to label it listening and you'll be adding um, interactive content here. Let's save that. Next one is another skill and that's speaking. Let's go into editing and write speaking. Next one, let's save that, is reading. So we're going to go into topic five, edit and call it reading. Okay, and the next one, you could probably guess what it is since this is TESOL, Teaching English Speakers of Other Languages. So our topic six is going to be, let's go into that, edit. It's going to be writing, writing, there we go. Number seven is going to be grammar. Now you can add grammar uh, before vocabulary, that's up to you, but we'll keep it here. So you can have engaging activities for grammar exercises, whatever you're teaching. But we want it, the main focus to be on vocab, listening, speaking, reading, and writing. Right, the next one, topic eight, is showcase and reflect because that's your final section. So it's showcase and reflect and you'll add all kinds of reflect um, engaging activities here for that number nine let's go into edit settings is certificate certificate of completion Okay, this is where you will create a certificate for your students so they can access their certificate once they finish everything. Now, this is a real course and you'll be creating it. Let me go into um, add an activity resource. I think I'll do it through the general. The general, by the way, let's change that. The general, we're going to edit settings there 
and change that to syllabus. And you'll be able to uh, add a description there and then add the syllabus. The syllabus will be in a Google Doc format and you'll be able to add it under syllabus. Notice the announcement is also here, but uh, just ignore that for now. Right, so we talked about add an activity or resources. So these are uh, all the activities and resources that you can choose from. But we're going to go into resources first so that you can add a resource. The resource could be a YouTube video. It could be a book, which is like a syllabus. You might want to use that for the syllabus where you have chapters and everything. It could be a file, it could be a page, or it could be text. Well, text and media is not really a resource, it's just a label, and it could be a URL. Let's go into the activities. There are a lot more activities, of course. Notice there's an assignment. Uh, you can do that, have assignments. I try to use other activities rather than assignments. Um, we don't need that really. You don't need attendance, um, chat, checklist, choice you might want to have if you want to have groups, but that's not really an activity. Well, it is here, but it's not an engaging activity uh, as such. There's the certificate, it's also here under activity, but that's not what you want for your students at this time. You will do that for the ninth section, uh, there's debate. You might want to have a debate. That's definitely. So let's add these as our favorites. Debate. Diary is um, great for um, students. Uh, feedback at the end. Form definitely, but feedback too. You can have it not only at the end of uh, the course, but you can also have it at the end of each section. Game crossword. Game Cryptex, uh, okay, all these games you might want to have. Okay, these are great for language learning. Um, so do, glossary you might not want to add. That's for a very developed group choice. If you're familiar with H5P, you can add them. If you're not, hot question is good. Uh, interactive content is just like H5P. Lesson is a bit complicated. This is perfect for language. Mini lesson, read aloud, which I already had. Start. Let's restart. Polo, poodle, pull, uh, word cards. Quiz is not really, uh, takes a lot of time, but you might want to do that. I would stay away from it. Sticky notes is a great activity. Uh, verbal feedback is a nice activity. And, um, and that's it. Okay, so choose one of the ones that I favored. Uh, leave the other ones out. You don't need them at this time. First work with these and then you can always come back once you've mastered the other tools, so to speak. So let's go to the starred ones. Okay, they're all here and these are the ones that you can choose from. Let me go back into resources because you will need to use um, a URL. A book is already there. And uh, I wouldn't work with files, but you might want to work with a page. Okay, so we can add that. That's up to you. So these are the starred ones, the ones that you'll be using in each of these sections. So for the syllabus, of course, you can um, go into the syllabus area here. Okay, that's the information that you have right now. But you're going to add an activity. Wherever you are under that section, the activities will go there. So, for example, if I add a book, which is very appropriate, instead of the syllabus, I'll give it a name. I'll call it Syllabus of the Course, just to have a different title. And then a description um, in this book you will be able to learn about the syllabus of the course, okay? Because it is a book. They can also print it out, of course. I can have the description or not have the description if I don't want to. Okay, that's up to me. Appearance, uh, you can see, you can set it up. Numbers, common modules, you don't need to worry about that. Restrict access, you might want to restrict it. There are different ways of restricting access. Okay, let me... 
completion conditions. Now for these, this is really important. Please set the requirements. So it's not manual. In this case, the requirement would be to view. But always set a requirement, unless it's a link, but even a link just to view it. Okay, and then we can save and return to the course. Now notice where it will appear. It will appear under the syllabus, which now is in bold. And there it is, the course syllabus. You click on the course syllabus and there you're able to give it a, the chapter title for the first one. So we'll call it, I don't know, introduction to the course perhaps. Okay, and then the content will be again, intro to the course. Okay, I just want to show you what it looks like and then save changes. Once you have this, notice what happens. It pops up and there's a, as you can see here, the table of contents. So what you do is you keep going to the plus and then you add a new chapter and you give it a title and then you add the content. So the next chapter, of course, is vocabulary, so you might want to call that vocabulary and then explain what the students will be able to. It's not a subchapter, okay? So uh, a description would be something about the vocabulary, which you will add there. I haven't, but I'll let you do that. Okay, so then um, if I go into the book, I'll be able to get that. So let's go back into the syllabus of the course, which is the book. And then notice the arrow here. Open that up and you'll be able to see everything and go through that. Or if you go into, uh, let's uh, go back here, into the top right here, open block drawer, you'll be able to see uh, the table of contents. So it's on the right. If you forget, let me know and I'll be happy to help. Uh, use the support forms of the course uh, to do that. You can also add a support form here, and I suggest you do that for each of the uh, sections so that uh, if you or your students want to engage in um, helping one another, your student will help you with questions and you'll help the student with answers. So again, the plus, and then you add another uh, section or chapter. And that's how it works. Let's go back into the course. Notice on the left here, all the information will now be available. On the left, there is a syllabus of the course. So you can see that uh, that's where we are right now. We're going to go back to the course either at the top on the left there. And then we see everything in the middle and close that up. Or we can use TESOL online, which is uh, all these. But then we can go back to our course. Okay, so notice again. The name of the course right now is TESOL Online with AI, which you're going to change. So first thing, as I said, you add the topic sections and then you go into each topic and you add, you go into add an activity or resource and then you go to your start. Okay, you'll start them. First you go into all our activities and resources, you start them. Make sure that you start these, okay? These are the ones that you will be working with, with your students. And if you have any questions, of course, use the support form. And that's it. Looking forward to seeing your course. And if you haven't joined TESOL Online, please do. It's completely free. And I'll add the link in the description of this video. Have a great day.